Hey, what's up folks? This is Keith. You're watching Barber's Auto Help. Thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to replace the oxygen sensor on a 2AZ FE Toyota engine. Now, the vehicle that's featured in this video here is an 05 Scion TC. However, the 2AZ FE engine has been used by Toyota on a myriad of their products over many years. So, I think that this should apply to most, if not all of them always verify now as with most automotive repair projects you do want to make sure that the engine is off and make sure it's fully cooled before you attempt this that exhaust is very very hot you don't want to get burned i also recommend disconnecting the negative clamp from the battery and isolating it from the battery be sure the vehicle is in park and that the parking brake is applied okay so let's get down in there and change out this o2 sensor now this is the bank one sensor one oxygen sensor that i'm going to be showing you how to replace today now it took me a little while looking at this thing to try to to figure out how to disconnect this of course we're going to have to get our wire outside of this little clamp right here see these right here take them and squeeze them together like that you'll hear a little crunch or a snap inside and then separate it like that go ahead and remove the wire from it Okay, now let's go ahead and turn our attention to the oxygen sensor connector, which is right here. Now, a lot of people would probably suggest removing the air filter housing and the snorkel, or the top portion of the air filter housing anyway. I'm going to try to do this without doing that because I like shortcuts. So in order to do this, we're going to need a pocket screwdriver, and then we're going to go right up inside here. There's a locking mechanism inside this connector. We're just going to pry the locking mechanism out like that. Now, while you're prying that locking mechanism outward and unlocking it, you're going to take your other hand and grab the connector and disconnect the connector. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I did a lot of editing there. That was actually more difficult than it looked. It might be better just to remove the, uh, the air inlet tube so that way you can get both hands down in there and uh, have plenty of room to work with. Now, if you do take the air inlet tube out, you can actually get to the button that you're supposed to press anyway. Pretty easy. Instead of using the screwdriver, that's the button you press in to unlock the lock, which you see inside there. So push that in and it should unlock it. You can use a screwdriver as well, just like I showed you earlier. But that's actually how you're supposed to disconnect this connector. And that's how you're supposed to unlock it first and then pull the two halves of the connector apart. All right, now time for the removal of the oxygen sensor. And you will need a special socket for this. You don't have to have this special socket, but you'd have to do it a different way. But we're going to be using a special O2 sensor socket, which looks like this. This opening right here actually is a 7 8 by the way, if you were wondering. And you can see it's got a little nut on the end here that you could use a, a wrench on if you needed to. And then it's got a 3 8 drive on it. You can use a ratchet with it if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and install our socket. And you see how the... You see how the wire goes right up inside that socket like that. All right, fully seat it. You're going to take your 3 8 drive ratchet, place it on the end. Now, once you break it free, you'll probably be able to take it out the rest of the way by hand. And it's actually easier to do that. Just go ahead and spin it all the way out. like so. Now installation of course is reverse procedure. Now your new oxygen sensor should come with some anti-seize on the threads right here. Be careful don't smear that anti-seize everywhere and definitely don't get it on the tip of your oxygen sensor. Uh, that can kind of booger it up a little bit there so go ahead and install your new sensor. Thread it by hand. Always best to do it by hand first and of course get it ran down by hand as far as you can go. Reinstall your oxygen sensor socket. And torque down the oxygen sensor. Go ahead and reconnect the connector. And it'll only go in one way. You can see it's kind of keyed there. Make sure your locking mechanism snaps into place. Give it a tug, make sure it's secure. Go ahead and put the uh, wire back in place here and reconnect this. 
course, if you disconnected your battery, you want to reconnect it at this time. If you had codes, you want to erase them at this time. And then, of course, test drive the vehicle, make sure that it's running properly. Now, say you don't have that special socket that I was talking about there. You might be able to do this a different way, albeit it, it might be kind of a risky way. Uh, this shield here comes right up. It's held on by fasteners right here. And I believe those are 10 millimeters. Uh, if you're lucky, you could probably get those fasteners right off and just kind of pull the shield right out of the way. And then you should be able to get to that uh, with a open end 7 8 wrench. Or you may even be able to use the box end of the wrench and uh, just work it down over that, that connector there if it'll fit. If it doesn't fit and you know your oxygen sensor is bad, you can, of course, clip the wires and put your box end of the wrench on there and then work it off that way because you're going to be replacing it anyway. So, Folks, that is it for this video. As always, please read the entire description down below this video before you apply any of this knowledge or attempt this. There may be some things I need to clarify. That's where I do that. Also, please read the disclaimer at the very end. And yes, I know I put up some text on the screen there saying that you should wear gloves. I ran out. Really, you should be wearing some gloves. Uh, a lot of this stuff is unhealthy to come in contact with. So I would highly suggest wearing gloves and safety glasses, no matter what you're doing on an automobile. Thanks again, guys. Have a good one.